It said that desperate times call for desperate measures. And it's been revealed that the MI5 Domestic Intelligence Service of Britain has taken over responsibility for combating extreme right-wing terrorism in the country as fears grow that white supremacists are fermenting violent racial conflict in the land. The Guardian newspaper has said that MI5 will lead the mission to monitor far-right extremism, a responsibility that has, until now, been assigned to the British police. Until now, MI5 has focused on dealing with terrorism linked to Takfiri ideologies like Daesh and Al-Qaeda and those related to a separatist movement in Northern Ireland. The new focus on the rise of the far right reflects official concern that Islamophobic and anti-immigrant activity and those individuals and groups promoting this in the UK have now become a threat to national security. One of the individuals at the centre of these concerns is known as Tommy Robinson, founder of the self-styled English Defence League. He was invited into Parliament by a pro-Brexit member of the House of Lords. Robinson, who has been repeatedly found guilty of offences including assault, mortgage fraud and travelling on a fake passport, is linked to campaigns against Muslims and immigrants in the UK. His presence in the Houses of Parliament drew widespread criticism, including from the Speaker of the House of Commons, Mr John Burko. Many claim Robinson's activities have helped encourage indiscriminate attacks on Muslims and caused a surge in hate crimes in the UK over the past years. Are British authorities becoming particularly concerned about an increase in Islamophobia? And is there anything which can prevent the growth of far-right terrorism? Simple questions with important answers. And let's start with this. What is the public's view of the term right-wing terrorism? What does it mean to them? We asked the public here in central London. Here's what they said. Well, as long as they operate within the law, uh, that's, that's all we can ask. Other, other than that, um, uh, no, I'd uh, prosecute them and put them in jail. Yeah, I think uh, nowadays uh, terrorism is a big problem. Everybody's, uh, it's uh, a problem in uh, every, everybody's mind. Well, I would say there's some. There's going to be some in every country, though. You can't like specifically say it's just in the UK. I, I don't really know, know what it really means, but... I know of the group, but you know, but I really don't have any comment to say on it. Well, I suppose it's the uh, the skinheads you see on the TV waving the uh, flag of St George completely inappropriately and making a blooming nuisance of themselves. Right-wing terrorism, fear, real fear. Like I say, I, I don't really get into politics, so I just let life go along as itself. Do you know what I mean? There weren't any issues out of life. Right-wing terror? Well, it's exactly as you say it. Terror, isn't it? Yeah. Any terror is terror. Uh, shite. Well, I hate them. Um, are they just all about hatred and division and all that? Well, I guess the right-wing uh, expresses itself when we don't have a, a good middle way. That's what I think. Right-wing terrorism has been going on in this country for decades. You had Combat 18 in the 90s, which were notorious for targeting black and Irish people. You had National Action, which was recently prescribed. And that was just to carry on from the Combat 18 days. It was just a modernized version. It's a neo-Nazi outfit. One of the members tried to kill a Sikh man because he thought he looked like a Muslim. Members of the British Army were found to be card-carrying members of this organization. But then you have much more insidious groups, which people don't see as right-wing or try and paint as just nationalistic, such as the DFLA, the EDL, the Tommy Robinson Brigade, all of them, you will find people within these groups that are linked to neo-Nazism, are linked to loyalist terrorism, which is the most right-wing of right-wing terrorisms in Britain, where they all look to with wide-eyed admiration. They take inspiration from these groups. Right-wing terrorism in this country has always been here. It's nothing new. Right-wing terrorism um, is linked to the fascist and the far-right Nazi groups that have been carrying out attacks and murders in this country for over 20 to 30 years. 
Um, the danger is that those groups have grown with the support of the English Defence League, with the cover of people like Tommy Robinson, that with inside that we saw the attack on Frinsley Park carried out by Barry Osborne in which the judge referred to the nature of people like Tommy Robinson encouraging them and motivating them. The real danger is that both MI5, the security services, have not really taken seriously the danger of far-right populism and far-right racism because it's part of the mainstream discussion. And uh, I think because of that, the danger is that their focus has been primarily on, as they said, Islamic terrorism. But really, the narrative has been wrong as well, as they're two sides of the same coin. And actually, the dynamic that takes place with so-called Islamic terrorism is generated by foreign policy, by the nature of, as Butler Schloss said, quite rightly from MI5 and MI6, the blowback situation from Britain's foreign wars has created that situation. It's reported that assigning MI5 to dealing with the far right is a result of the fact that British authorities are concerned about the rise of Islamophobia. What are the public's thoughts? Well, I don't know whether the police are handling it well or not, to be honest with you. As long as somebody's handling it, that's, that's fine by me. I don't know, because maybe they, they have no way to fight it, because it's uh, everywhere and nowhere at the same time. So. They are trying to find solution, but... Well, I would say that's a problem for the government. Cutting budgets to major forces, not just the police. So I wouldn't say that's the police's fault, that's the government. Well, I guess it makes sense. I mean, they look at other terrorist groups, so it makes sense for them to do that. I think the police have got enough on their hands, you know, just on the streets with the, uh, the threat of terrorism and uh, law and order. So, yeah, I think it makes perfect sense to me. To be perfectly honest, anything that prevents terrorism has got to be good. So that's a good idea. Definitely, yeah. I mean, something needs to be done. You know, people need to walk around the street safe and not feel like they're in danger all the time. Well, I think any um, xenophobia or uh, phobias about other people have no place in modern society. Uh, well, they seem to be putting too much effort into the attacking the left-wing people. So, yeah. I think a few of them are actually within the MI5 most probably got some of these to the right. I think it's probably the wrong way. It's better to just make good um, solutions for people to follow instead of, you know, just attacking and um, punish. The rise in Islamophobia, the British authorities have been turning a blind eye to Islamophobia. They've been playing into it. Members of Parliament play into it. Members of the police play into it. The armed forces play into it. The armed forces in 2007 actually had make-up mosques on their firing ranges. And here they are saying they're countering Islamophobia. They created the Islamophobia. They use Islamophobia for their own agenda. They might now be seen to be clamping down on certain groups, but the crux of the problem is with the state. These organizations and these groups could not operate freely with their racist agenda without the state. So the British armed forces, the very structures of this country are racist to the core. They are Islamophobic to the core. And MI5 itself is Islamophobic. It's MI5 who is the main problem in all this, not little groups on the streets that essentially all they do is march with a can of lager in their hands. MI5 is the one out there targeting the Muslim community. MI5 is the ones out there whipping up war against the Middle East. Well, I think Islamophobia has been alive and unabated. In fact, I think Islamophobia has been encouraged because it became the mainstream explanation for what the problems were taking place in the world. I think the gathering of Muslims in this country has taken place over the last 20 years as a consequence of the wars that have taken place. I also think that there's been a legitimisation of racism. As Baroness Wolsey said, it became the last legitimate form of racism and therefore the far right became enabled to do that. Previously, they'd focused on anti-Semitism. They still are anti-Semitic but they've decided to use Islamophobia because many of the people at the top, Boris Johnson, Michael Gove, gave legitimacy to it. And the danger is they set fire to a very dangerous field. And I believe that far-right terrorism is one of the biggest dangers to democracy that we face. These people, are the only MP that's been killed in this country by terrorism has been killed by, Joe Cox was killed by a far-right terrorist. That should have been warning enough for people to take this thing seriously. He shouted Britain first as he murdered a young woman on her own. Um, and I, I believe that brutal murder was a warning to all of us. Tommy Robinson convicted several times of offences, including assault, mortgage fraud, and traveling on a fake passport has been known for his fierce campaigning against Muslims and immigrants in the UK. Yet he was invited for a meal in parliament. What does the public feel about this? Doesn't sound right, does it? But uh, I, I don't know enough about the case, but it doesn't sound good. 
people um, uh, are different and I think terrorism is not uh, born from the from different cultures it's only I don't know violence um. everyone's got a right to voice their opinion not everyone's going to agree with it but doesn't make it wrong I think there's not enough police but you know you can only afford as much as you can in the in Great Britain so yeah to go that extent you know it's it must be bad it is bad anyway I can't think why anybody would want to invite him in and uh, have dinner with him in the base case, but uh, I, I guess whoever invited him thought it was appropriate to do so, but certainly not something I'll be doing, but then I wouldn't be having dinner with him in the base case, so uh, I think uh, if he's locked up behind bars, we'd probably all be better off for it. Maybe they're trying to sort of um, convince him to be a good man. Who knows? I think he has a right to wear his views. I think everybody's got a right to speech, so freedom of speech, that's why people vote. That's why people fought in wars, to keep the country, to get a freedom of speech. I don't know the full facts on that. And to be honest, if you have friends, some of your friends you might not agree with what they do. And is it better to ignore them or to discuss, put your point of view across to them? That's ridiculous. Because he's, uh, oh, you know, he's so, uh, so undemocratic and he's going into a democratic... Uh, you know, outfit, like Parliament. Well, that's a good idea. Inviting is always good. Why shouldn't he be invited for a millionaire? This is the same Parliament that has voted time and time again to destroy Muslim countries. They destroyed Iraq, they've destroyed Afghanistan, they've destroyed Libya, they're destroying Syria, and they're destroying Yemen. From this very institution. So he should be wined and dined in there. I think the establishment's problem with Robinson, by and large, is that he hasn't got a polished face on it. They are much more sophisticated in their racism, whereas Robinson is very brash. He's essentially the same. There is no difference. Robinson has been courted by UKIP now, by Lord Pearson, who invited him to the House of Lords. They don't like it in there because essentially he is showing up their racism. Because at the end of the day, they're all part of the same agenda. They're all British nationalists. They're all loyal to the British state. They all pledge allegiance to this state. Why shouldn't Robinson be in there? What's the problem? It's, it's, a issue, it's a non issue in my mind, a complete non issue. Robinson is a racist, but the, he's a junior partner in all this. The senior racists are in the house next door voting to destroy Muslim countries every single year without a doubt. They are voting to destroy Muslim communities, they're voting to destroy their countries, and they are voting essentially to just m marginalize a whole community whereby you've got Muslim people being attacked in the street because of the hatred coming out of that parliament building. Robinson plays into it, but it's easy to put all the blame onto him. I think he's not just been invited for a million parliament, he's invited to address Congress by uh, Republican, uh, Republican people. In other words, the so-called idea that they're opposed to terrorism, they're opposed to people using violence to intimidate a minority. What we're seeing in reality is a green light to that. Tommy Robinson, Stephen Yoxley, the English Defence League, which was always run by Nazis, has actually been given legitimisation by the top. And I, I believe that unless something's done about it, he'll use those kind of politics to generate hatred and division. And that form of terrorism has to be challenged, both by the security services, but also by large by the society as a whole, because the danger is he repeats what Adolf Hitler did. In other words, he carries out that form of terrorism at the hands of the brown shirts and the rest of it. And actually, what the real is real end product of that was an end of democracy and I think those senators or Republicans that are w uh, working with Tommy Robinson, the Gert Velders, the Le Pens, actually they're the biggest danger to terrorism and they need to be opposed. The figures tell a revealing story. Hate crimes represent about 2% of crimes recorded by the police. In terms of actual incidents, 94,000 hate crimes were recorded by the police in England and Wales in 2017 to 2018. That's an increase of 17% on the previous year, and more than double the number from five years ago. The proportion of hate crimes recorded by the police based on race is 76%. Racially or religiously aggravated violence in the months after the Brexit referendum rose by 44 per cent. Why, in the public's view, is far-right terrorism on the rise at this time? Um, I think a lot of it's fueled by the press. Um, we exaggerate so much in the press that everything's extreme these days. Um, and I, I'm a great believer in freedom of speech, but we, we just exaggerate things too much. 
because this is the easiest solution. I mean, if the government uh, go in that way with uh, racism and polit uh, political parties uh, going popular, this is so the people are following. So this is a, a huge fear. And this is the easiest solution to say, okay, let's uh, put all the Islamist uh, people uh, out of the country. But this is not the solution. I don't know, I guess there's just a feeling where, you know, you've got the, like, the white working class and, I don't know, I guess they're, they're just trying to get their hatred out on, you know, like different people when maybe they should be voicing it to someone different. Yeah, because it's racist, isn't it? You know, you know if you're going to be racist, you keep your mouth shut or, you know, I'll keep them out. I guess, you know, there obviously has been problems with terrorism and a lot of that has come from that. I wouldn't say the Islamic community, but people who are associated as Islamic and there's a natural reaction to that and it gives the the people who I get that way inclined, it gives them a point to rally around, I guess, and gives them a common cause which uh, they think they can go and do things that otherwise they might uh, uh, might not do. Perhaps it's a defence mechanism to, for people against things that are going on that never used to be going on. I don't think it's just at this time specifically. You know, everything comes up in different times, different places. So I don't think you can pinpoint a time and say this is why it's happening now. So obviously Brexit's a big thing, but you know, we managed before when we traded on our own and we'll manage again. I think a lot of people have felt a bit disenfranchised and uh, I think because it's sort of a little bit pushy, they think that that's the way to do things, but I don't agree with it myself. I think you could do it much better by reasoned talking to people. Oh, I think the, the right, you know, the people that own the media and that, they got, they got the ownership and, uh, you know, they they're, um, seem to be pumping out, you know, because they got the ownership, they got pumping out more bullshit and uh, that's where the sway is and a lot of the general public are easily led, you know, the sheep, sheep mentality. I think the far right is rising because everyone is polarizing now today in all countries, in, in the East as well as in the West. And uh, um, that's a very sad uh, development. Is it rising now? National Action have carried out terror attacks in this country. They tried to murder someone. They had plots to kill MPs. They supported the murder of Joe Cox a couple of years ago. And before them, as we've discussed already, that you had combat in. You had loyalist terror groups. You had what was called the White Defence League in the 50s. You had the BNP, you had the National Front, carrying out acts of terror in their own right, targeting immigrant communities, plotting to even do explosions, gun running in some cases. So where's the rise? It's always been here. It's embedded into this theory society. So when they say it's on the rise, it's always been here. There's, it is nothing new. It's scaremongering. What we need to do is have communities in this country, the Muslim community, any community under attack need to come together and resist this, but not via the state. They can't be reliant on the very state that allows these groups to morph into what they are. They can't rely on their, the security services. Without the security services, there would be none of these groups. You look into how many times, as we've discussed in Combat 18, members of these groups have been... Is there a problem? Is there a No. Everything Okay. I'll, re I'll re go. I'll re go. Okay, okay, all right, okay, I'll re go. Okay, I'll re go. Okay, it's all right, it's all right. Um, so why do you think that far-right terrorism is rising at this stage? I don't think it is rising. Far-right terrorism has been here since the end of the empire, since you had people migrating from other parts of the world to this country. You had the White Defence League, you had the National Front, you had the BNP, you had Combat 18, you had the EDL, you now have National Action, which is prescribed. You've got the DFLA, the FLA, you've got Tommy Robinson's new movement, you've got UKIP. That's the last 70 years, and I've missed out a whole heap of others. So it's, it's not rising. If you look at what the White Defence League's motto was, it's just... It was more open then, now it's more sophisticated. You've got Generation Identity, another one. You know, it's not on the rise, it's always been here. Look at the loyalist terrorism, which is what all of these groups in Britain look to for inspiration. It's accepted. You've got people that have been convicted of gun run running, trying to do explosions. It's, it's not on the rise. Look at what David Copeland did in the 1990s. He blew up gay bars. He targeted the black community in Brixton. He, he was going to target the Sikh and Muslim community afterwards. That's 20 years ago he was blowing people up. Is it on the rise? No, it's always been here. But you need to understand the communities in this country need to come together to resist it, not rely on the state, because it is the state that is foisting these very groups on and allowing them to morph into what they become. The state is the problem, 
and we need to focus on that. I think it's been funded. I think that there are funds from the United States that has funded Tommy Robinson. I believe the legitimization of the ideas and also um, small groups of Nazis now find themselves in a much wider group of people. If you look at some, an organisation like UKIP that had a policy of excluding BNP National Front members and EDU members as its uh, membership, it's now saying there should be a constitutional change in its organisation to allow these people. In other words, the cordon sanitaire that existed around the far right and Nazi terrorism has meant that they've been welcomed by open arms into so-called um, parties like UKIP. UKIP was a racist party, but I think it's actually engaged in a dance with the, with the far right under Batten and under Nuttall that actually legitimises these levels of terrorist attacks. What can be done to tackle the rise of far-right terrorism? The public said this. Maybe making people more aware um, of uh, different religions and different races and different cultures. Uh, maybe it's an education process. I don't have the solution and uh, if I have I will tell it but uh, I don't have any solution but I uh, I think the racism is not the solution. Uh, we have to love each other, each other and uh, learn each other from our different cultures. And I don't know, we have to talk, and, but I don't have any solutions to, but the solution is not to stay at home and stop to live. I guess everyone's just got to chill out really. You know, it's not the color of people's skin or their religion. They're just people at the end of the day. God. That's a big question. We need help. <laughs> we need help. Well, you know, small with the, you know, start with the smaller generation. That's where we really need to start to bring them up, you know, because I think that's where it lays education. It's very difficult to see how. I mean, you got, you know, you've got to change the whole of society, haven't you? You got to get try and get people actually thinking and living together. I mean, you know, here we are voting to get out of Europe when the last thing we need to be doing is uh, breaking up from other countries. We need to be getting on better with them and uh, uniting. Yeah, you know, we've got to, as soon as we recognise we're one world and not individual countries, I think the better. I'll leave that to you guys. People just, communities need to come together, don't they? People need to work together. doesn't matter about the colour of your skin, where you come from, anything. People just need to be human beings and respect other people. You know, let people run their lives, go to work, earn an honest living. You know, what possessions they've earned in their life they should keep and people shouldn't be harming people for anything whatsoever. Well, I think it's got to start right at the beginning. Uh, people have got to start teaching their children about uh, values of tolerance and, um, well, old-fashioned love, really, and acceptance of other people that they may be different. But differences are what makes, you know, the variety in life, and the variety in life is what makes it all interesting. Well, people have just got to get involved. People with any ounce of decency have got to get involved, not be, not just sort of, uh, a lot of apathy, you know. So people have got to do their history and fit, and learn from history, especially the Second World War. I mean, the 11th, the 100 year, 100 year commemoration is coming up soon. So, you know, people got to just go back to their history and think, they're going to be lazy and apathetic, it's going to, that shit's going to come upon us again. You have to oppose the British state. It's all well and good people going out and demonstrating against the EDL. It's all well and good people going out and demonstrating against the DFLA. They cannot operate in any sophisticated manner. They are doing isolated attacks on people. They are targeting people in the street, usually girls with hijabs and stuff like this. But by and large, the problem is with the state. You can't be going out on a Saturday afternoon and blocking off a road saying, oh, we stop the racist. The racist is your state. So people in this country need to stop sitting on their thumbs and get out and oppose the British state because the British state, since its very inception, is a racist structure. There will be no change via the British state. You can't ask the British state for anything. You can't ask them to come along and solve your racist problem. You need to smash that state, get rid of that state and stop relying on their security services and their military who are the biggest racists of all to come and help you. I think we can tackle far right terrorism by stopping them from putting their main narrative out which is blaming Muslims, blaming people they don't agree with, and building a mass movement to oppose them. I think too many politicians think their votes in it in order to isolate people. We've seen Donald Trump know. The reason why Donald Trump played with racism over the elections was because he knew that he could get votes out of them. What we have to do is to make that an impossible thing. We have to mobilise the majority of people that hate that kind of politics into a majority of people that resist it. And therefore, by draining the swamp, 
by attacking the people that try and put those ideas, show those people they're a tiny minority and their violence, their racism, their murders will not go without justice and will not go without people saying that we'll stand up for each other, we'll stand up in a united way. The figures tell a clear story of the rise of Islamophobia and its normalisation within British culture. This is regarded as such a serious threat to the future of the United Kingdom that the high-level anti-terrorist section of Britain's intelligence forces, MI5, have been brought in to deal with the threat this poses to national security. Various reasons, including Brexit, seem to lie behind the growth of racist and Islamophobic violence in Britain. But one thing is clear. The authorities are now so concerned about the implications for law and order that they have brought in top intelligence teams to deal with the danger. They fear that, unless they tackle these issues now, British society could decline from a condition of relative stability to little more than anti-immigration and Islamophobic anarchy in the UK.